We're over at the mill. And we're gonna figure out how to do this. So the arbor on the slitting saw is three quarters of an inch. So I have to go get a three quarter of an inch collet. Okay, here we are, slitting saw. Yep. So before we get too excited here, um, I'm gonna figure out how we're gonna hold things. And get some lube going. So if you'll excuse the uh, reach over here. Pull up on the lube pump. Two kinds of lube going into the mill. This is spindle lube first. And a light oil in another place. Couple of dabble these. Yeah, we're good. So basically, we're going to hold the part like so. Problem is, is that we don't want to super imbalance our jaws. So we're going to measure the height of this thing and see if we can't get something to balance it. Well, what do you know? It's 1.095. Let's see what we got. So here's a little trick. We've got a socket head cap screw that is just ever so slightly too long. And I'm just going to file down the end of it until it's just ever so slightly too short. And then we're going to have a little uh, jack to match our part. The socket head cap screw is 1.1, 1.11, and our part is 1.09. So it's not a lot of filing, but I'll be back. Oh, uh, this is for you, Ox Tools. Let's measure that. I think we should go for 1.05. Yeah, Also, uh, this is for fireball tool. I don't want you to be left out. Where to go? It'd be easier if I walked over to my my uh, small one inch belt grinder, but then I wouldn't get any, uh, any filing in. And this is not the uh, best file in the drawer, if you'll pardon the expression. I gotta get a better file.
we're uh, fine here. So I think we're gonna go with it. So now we have a little, we have a little uh, machinist jack. One point oh nine four. One point oh nine five, one point oh nine four. So that's set. Put that in. this in so that's just tight by hand and that just sits there nice and tight vice is happy everybody's happy Vice is happy, everyone's happy. So what do I mean by kinematic loop? So you have your tool here, and if you follow the forces, they go up into the head, over to the ram, down into the frame of the machine, over into the saddle, back up to the table. And that makes a loop. And we want that to be as short as possible so that we get uh, as little deflection from the forces as possible. So I'm just driving the table over so that the saw will not touch the vice jaws. I put this in neutral. So the saw will not touch the vice jaws, but it will get over the center line of the part. Okay, and I'm actually gonna mark that because it's useful. And then I'm just going to come down with the quill. And very gently touch the top of the part. Zero my quill. Come back out. Come on down. Lock the quill. And I'm just going to come back to that same setting, which I know is not going to touch the jaws. And now we're there. Now I'm gonna unlock the quill. Come up and I'm, I'm ready to uh, divide by two. So we got 532. So that's 250, 266. Let's write that down on our notepad. 532 over two is 250 plus 016 is 266. That's it. There's our number. So we will come back down, get off the part, move the table. Now we're going to come up to 266 and lock it. There it is, 266 on the, uh, on the Quill DRO, and it sure does look like it's on center line. So now I'm just gonna pick up the surface here. Boink, set my zero. And that's it. Okay, so I'm ready to cut. Last thing I'm gonna do is just 
come up with a number for how deep I'm going to drive the saw. And I know I can sort of guesstimate it, but I'm just going to measure it. I, I can actually, I can see that I can get to the center line here of the part, but I'm just going to measure it. So 0.2 will do fine. So just so we remember that, let's write that on our notepad. 0 0.2. And we're good to go. Let's set up our coolant. That's probably good enough. So the next thing we have to think about is the surface feet per minute. This is a high speed steel slitting saw and I don't think I want to exceed uh, 75 feet per minute. So I did a calculation uh, based on the diameter, which is, it's just under three inches. So I came up with about 89 RPM will give us about that number. So I'm going to go into low range here. I'm going to turn on the motor. So that's about 85 RPM. Let's do a little lube for the morning, so to speak. And we're gonna run this manually, manual. Double checking my vise is nice and tight because I did it yesterday. Coming into our 0.2 inches deep. Lock that. And now we're just going to turn on our uh, coolant and go. As usual, all saws are not concentric, and we're just going to run with it. It looks good. So we're going to leave it in the vise for a second because I think we're going to put a flat on this uh, on this side. But let's uh, let's think about this. So that looks like a quarter inch. Now the interesting thing is it's a quarter inch, but the the top of that screw is pretty chewy. So we, we may want to do something to clean up that screw a little bit. But no matter, we're going to put a flat on it so that we don't raise a burr. Interesting. Okay. So we know we're going to put a flat on it. Let's go, uh, let's go do that. So we found an entirely adequate but random end mill. So we'll put a generous flat on here and uh, 
I'm gonna double check the position of it. Okay, so the flat wants to be 745 from one end. So we're just gonna come in and eyeball the um, eyeball the zero for the end mill. Doesn't have to be super precise. Okay, so we're just gonna go in, we're gonna make this a, uh, we'll make this a zero. And we're just gonna go in and put a nice flat on there by hand, artistically. All right, we gotta deburr that and uh, we'll probably be good to go. Let's take it out. Multiple processes running today. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, is he gonna pick up the PFG stones? Eh, not on this one. So, I've got a little burr going here. I'm just going to use a wider file, bridge the flat. So this looks good. This looks like I'm I'm done here. Here's the slot. So you may recall that we left this bushing long, and this is the reason, so we can grab it. Still a little bit of something being unhappy with us. Okay. Gonna get a little bit of uh, lube. This is LPS one. It's a nice light lube. For a lot. Just making sure it's aligned. The way I want it. It looks good. Okay, here's the game plan. So the game plan is that we're going to drill an undersized hole ready for uh, boring. Then we're gonna use our newly bushed 
marry tool boring bar in our criterion holder and we're going to bore the hole and then you know normally you would you might choose to ream or lap the hole but we're just going to see if that'll get us to a good 10 millimeter fit and we're going to use a scrap piece of steel to test it out and that'll all be done on the bridge port and I think that's going to uh, that'll work if we have a huge problem getting a good uh, a good fit on this pin we'll go to plan B plan B involves uh, making a D reamer or a D bit reamer on uh, on the grinder but let's see if this works because this is what we've got now I might switch this insert over to an insert which is actually designed for aluminum because it's very sharp and take much finer cuts but we'll see um, let's get the first base first so I get asked a lot you know when you make the PFG stones how come I make the PFG stones with ground sides and of course the correct answer is because Robin Renzetti told me to but in reality we use the sides and, and we're going to show you where right now because it just happened this isn't a setup um, I want to stone this taper because uh, I'm feeling some things on it and they might be okay but I can't get in here with a regular stone okay if I try to get in here with a regular stone I I just simply can't I hit the I hit the uh, shaft here so I'm gonna use the side of a stone but I went to the six inch stone because it's a little wider it's a better a little bit better match and I'm just gonna go like so so my hand is holding the chuck right and and I'm able to spin the chuck with my fingers and move the stone So, fun little fact, this is a Chinese uh, arbor, and I had to regrind it. <laughs> so, the, the surface we're, we're stoning right now is the surface that I reground many moons ago. And it's got some uh, dinkuses on it, but they, they feel okay now. They're all subsurface. So, this is ready to go into the mill. So in order to um, make these 10 millimeter holes, we're going to start with a 3 8 inch drill, which is 375. We have a center drill to get us started. Yes, I know it should be a spotting drill, not a center drill. We're not going to stand on ceremony. So a 3 8 inch drill bit, of course, is 9.5 millimeters. It drills a 375-ish hole and 10 millimeters is 394. So that leaves us about 10 thousandths on the walls to bore out. So uh, let's make a hole. Oops, this one first. We're going to use this um, Tap Magic Extra Thick just to keep the noise down. All right, time to face the music. So we have a bit of a problem. We have a gorgeous board hole. It really looks great. Uh, problem was, in three consecutive uh, boring cycles of this hole, 
we ended up five thousandths below target diameter then the next without changing anything we just ran it again we ended up at zero without changing anything we ran it again we ran we ended up at plus three point five and what that tells me is that we have enough flex in the system and there's enough there's a lot of tool pressure associated with with that cut that we're gonna have a hard time getting it right the first time on the target make no mistake about it the, the board hole does look good but it doesn't it, it's not sufficiently um, dependable uh, when we want to get it right the first time so there's a couple of things we can do here one of them is we can go to a much sharper uh, carbide tool another one is we can go to a much shorter tool which we don't have uh, another option is to make a cutter which has a much shorter stick out and finally another option is go to what we call a uh, a D reamer in w which is really a reamer but it's one we could make uh, this is working but there's still a bunch of tool pressure here. I think the easiest thing to try is to go to the uh, sharp insert that's intended for aluminum, but I tend to use it for very fine cutting and steel, and see what that does. The reason that's a good idea is that it, it's a very low barrier to entry. We just unscrew this insert, put in another insert, and play around some more. So I think we're going to do that. Okay, we have some inserts here. These are the aluminum inserts. In case you're wondering, this is a T7 Torx. Notice the non-trusting hand underneath. I'm actually pretty excited to try um, this insert on this application. Because I've long, long been a proponent of using these very sharp inserts on steel for fine cutting and that looks good Let's see how tight that is yeah I think I'm gonna run it with its current setting which is 43 and just see what happens Got a nice chip in there. Oops, kind of lost it. It looks good. And the surface finish is spectacular. I like it. I'm going to take a picture with the iPhone. So when we last cut it, it was uh, 3.5 thousandths over on the diameter. Wow! 3 thousandths over the diameter. So that was a really fine, fine uh, chip. I like the prospects of that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it again and see if it changes. 
So I'm not going to change anything here. Let's just see what happens. It would help if we're in gear. This is awesome. So, microchips. So the, the very, very sharp tool is doing its job nicely. The bore is unbelievably gorgeous. And now the question is, can we get the sucker on a size? I think one of the things I, I need to do is go to a drill size that leaves less meat with a boring tool to do its job. So with the calipers, that cut was unmeasurable. It's pretty encouraging. So we're probably going to set up here, move over, do another hole. I think I'm going to get a, a drill bit that's closer to final dimensions, which is 394. Okay, um, I've got a plan. The new plan involves switching from the 375 or 3 8 inch bit to a W bit. So, our first drill bit is 19 thousandths under target size. And the W bit is eight thousandths under target size. So the combination of using a larger bit to leave less to take off and the, sh the uh, very sharp um, insert, I think, is going to do the job for us. And we're going to run a test right now. Moving over 0.6 inches, as is traditional. So let's take some notes. So the as drilled hole is six thousandths under. Okay. Let's see what this thing does. So I'm going to make a command decision and we're going to reduce the diameter by three thousandths. Because it came out three thousandths over the floor. So instead of 43, we're going to go to 40. There's 40. Alright. We're at low speed.
Very nice chip. Nice cut. Nice everything. Beautiful. Let's see what we got. Okay. We're, we are... Holy cow. <laughs> this says we're dead on. Nominal. So... Let's see how this likes it. Yeah, that feels like dead on nominal. So let's run it one more time with no change, basically a spring pass, and see what we got. <laughs> All right, you see it? Nice, nice chip. Gorgeous surface finish. Blow it out. Sorry about the noise. Looks good. <laughs> All right, that feels super good, but it also means it took a cut. Let's find out how much. So it's two thousandths on the diameter. So <clears throat> I think uh, what I want to do is I'll take one thousandth more on the diameter and hopefully we get what we want in the first pass. I think that's going to do it. Or I'll leave it the way it is, because we don't know what's going to happen in the new material. This result would be pretty nice. I would have no problem with this result. Okay, that's a tighter fit than we had before. So, we're in pretty good shape here as far as what we're getting. Uh, the setting is, is 40 on the dial. And the recipe is the W bit plus the boring tool. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna go for it. So the worst case is we'll evaluate. We'll see where we are as far as um, diameter is concerned in the other material. Let's do it. Okay, so we're back with our tool block off the lathe, fresh off the lathe, and we're going to put the axis for our two holes, okay, this way, because that's the topmost scale on the mill, and therefore is the least chance of error. Of course, we actually have to get it in there. <clears throat> well, let's see. I bet you know what's coming.
Okay, we found the center line of the tool block. Okay. And we can confirm that by visually. So there's zero. And that looks like zero. Okay, so let's find the front. And that looks good. So this was 45 millimeters down from the top. So we're in metric now. All right, 45 down. Let's see what that looks like. I'm just going to use this for now as a pointer. Does that look like where we were? It looks like exactly where we were. And now if we do plus or minus 35, it should look a lot like what we intended. And that looks good. Okay, so we've we've locked up the um, the y-axis, which is on the bottom. The top is the x-axis. Um, visually, this is looking good. I'm using this center bit as a pointer. Okay, that's minus 35. It looks okay. And now we're going to go to plus 35. And that looks okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little tiny mark with the tool. Minus 35, all right, and then we're just going to visually inspect that that we have belt and suspenders. So visually we're getting 69.94 millimeters. And I'm going to guess that that's pretty close. 0.06 millimeters out. So we're going to trust the DRO, trust but verify, and let's get going. All right, we're locked up on our first hole location. We're not going to mess with our our DRO anymore. Um, there's one more thing to check. We may have to come down on the knee because we're not going to be able to get this guy in. And this is much higher than it was. So we're going to come down about the same amount that this guy went up, which is about one and a half inches. So I could just switch into inch mode and drop it one and a half inches. Spot on.
I'm ready to go. Okay, so off camera we uh, we spotted and drilled the pilot hole to 0.7 inches deep, and now we're going to go put the the W drill in the same way. It came out nice. All right. Let's just see if we can take a measurement here. Three eight eight five. Okay. So now we will bore. I think point five is going to be plenty. So let's switch this out. All right, so it's just touching. And I think we'll just, uh, we're not going to set the automatic stop. We'll just do this manually. We're going to 0.5. Nice chips. Oh, we're done. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes, nice. You so it bored a teeny bit bigger, however, it feels great. <laughs> You could definitely feel the suction. Okay, that recipe is perfect. I'm not gonna change anything. The only way that's gonna go is, is tighter uh, if the bit gets duller, but that is gorgeous. All right, so now we have to move over this way exactly uh, 70 millimeters. So I'm gonna use the DRO for that. I'm going to leave a little drag on, on the uh, axis. So we're going to plus 35 on the DRO. Nice. Plus 35 on the DRO and minus 45.00 on the Y. We're going to trust our DRO. Switch into the high gear just for a little more speed. Setting up our coolant. Now we're going to bore to 0 0.5. Double check our DRO, hasn't budged. 35 millimeters and minus 45 millimeters.
nice chips. Sorry for the noise. Haha. -ha. So either we have a burr or what I said was going to happen happened, which is that as the bit dulls, it's going to get smaller. So I think we're going to rerun that. It may give us a teeny bit more play, but I'm okay with that. So we're, let's rerun that. Now, let's observe really closely the chips that come out of here, and it'll tell you what it did on the second go around. Ha <laughs> ha! You see it? Did it take a cut? Yes it did. Was it a good chip? Yes it did. I love these sharp bits. Woohoo! Ha <laughs> ha! Another winner. Alright. We're done. All I have to do is deburr this, and our pinholes are complete. I'm very happy. Nice. I'm going to take a much earned break, then we're going to deburr these, and then we're going to test fit our tool post. Okay, we came off the bridge port, and everything looks great. Um, I took a couple of close-up photos of the holes. You could look inside and see where the uh, boring tool stopped, but it really looks clean. So the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. Before we did do that, I did use a deburring tool and I lightly deburred the corners, but then I noticed that they, it raised its own burr, uh, the, the act of chamfering that hole. So if we took our... Uh, our PFG stones were able to take down that raised area from the deburring and it took a while to be honest but it came down and I don't know if you can quite see that um, in the video but again here, here's the pin 10 millimeter pin it goes in it's, it pops <laughs> Um, on the right hand hole there's the tiniest uh, feeling of motion on the left hand hole there is nothing so they actually well, maybe there's a tiny bit they feel the same but those guys are an outstanding fit so I'm going to go grab the uh, tool post and let's just uh, see how it fits okay we're here with the tool post so remember the badge is here so the tool post sits like this and the holes there's, there's a little, little bit of spooge in there let's see if we can clean that out a little bit okay cleaned out the holes let's see how that fits Oh. So, predictably, we feel a teeny bit of uh, travel in there. It's really small, and it's really due to the um, accuracy of the holes in the tool post itself. But I'm liking that. The most important thing is that this does not depend on the T-nut anymore. This is directly from tool post to tool block to the cross slide. And I'll live with that. I mean, if I ever thought I didn't, I didn't like that, I can always do something about it. But the other feature of this installation is that if you ever want to take the pins out, you can take the pins out and uh, rotate the tool post. Although I, don't, I really do not anticipate doing that. So, uh, nice fix. 
The next step, <laughs> believe it or not, is to um, take the tool post that we modified, I'm sorry, the, the T-nut and stud that we modified and remove the pins that we glued in. So here's the Here's the T-nut and the stud that we modified, and we're just going to uh, get rid of those two pins. So the first thing we'll do is we'll soak it in acetone, uh, which will relieve the cyanoacrylate, and then we just punch out those pins and we're done. Whoa, oh boy. That is in there. <laughs> Zowie. I think we need a little liquid uh, or fire-based get-off-me juice here. All right, let's see what happens. And frankly, the heat can also uh, release the uh, cyanoacrylate. Yes, I know I'm raising burrs in an unimportant place. What? Welding rod, of course. And now we're going to attempt to pop out the pins that we added and use cyanoacrylate to secure. Doink. Here's one. We'll recycle that. Doink. And there's two. So our T nut is none none the worse for wear. We'll uh, do a little more cleanup on it and get it ready for reinstallation. I'm going to pop it back in the acetone for a little bit and uh, we'll get ready to go. So we uh, we cleaned up the block, used a brush in the threads, used the brush in the threads, and now we're ready to put it back together. We're using a Loctite 242. Remember, don't use too much. I'm sure the next guy will appreciate the fact that we're Worse than the last guy.
So the job's done, and what's it all mean? Well, we started with a problem, and the problem was the tool post rotated on a high pressure cut in titanium. That caused problems. So I used existing holes in the T-nut and existing holes in the tool post to put in pins, and then I shimmed the T-nut so that it had a tighter fit. That was a good fix kind of less desirable than this fix. Here we threw out those pins from the T-nut and we drilled and bored two holes to put pins in to directly locate the tool post. And it came out really great and we learned a bunch of things. Uh, the combination of the Criterion boring head with the Mary Tool quarter inch boring bar and the very sharp inserts that they say are for aluminum was a huge win. Um, one of my philosophies is, is that those sharp inserts are fine inserts <laughs> and the other ones are coarse inserts. Uh, and that, that was proven out today yet again. Uh, the PFG stones came into place because we have, uh, came into play because we had precision surfaces mating uh, we discovered that when we deburred the bored holes and then went over them with the PFG stones is that the, de the deburring, the adding of a chamfer, raised uh, a burr, <laughs> which we had to remove with the PFG stones. So all in all, this was a very simple project, but we had to do it with what was in the shop. And we did. And we're done. Thanks for hanging in there. Hope you learned something. Take care. We'll see you in the next one.